All right, appreciate everybody <clears throat> being here today. I uh, do want to begin by um, just our hearts are heavy and, and uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the Idaho uh, campus community as well as University of Virginia and the tragedies that have happened recently here and and uh, just a uh, very, very difficult time. And so I know uh, the football program there at Virginia is well affected by this and prayers for Coach Elliott as he takes um, his group through that very, very awful situation. So um, tough, tough, tough. Um, just want to uh, <clears throat> just comment from the game, really uh, um, disappointed in how we played in all three phases and uh, played a very good football team without question, but uh, did see some uh, younger guys step up and have opportunities to play against uh, elite football team, number two team in the country, and uh, felt like uh, had a lot of positive takeaways from those guys, and Carter Smith get a chance to play a lot of meaningful football for his first time, and, and Dexter, quarterback, and uh, Philip Dunn at safety, Caden Turner play as well, and then getting uh, Donovan McCauley a chance to get a touchdown and bring those guys along. So just uh, continue to develop and grow those guys and, and to build our program. Also, some young guys that uh, did a great job during the week uh, in our scouts. We have Cooper Jones as well as Jeff Unsinger as Defensive Scouts of the Week. And then off of the scouts were DJ Moore and Christian Harris. And then special team scout was Reese Lozano. Uh, excited about this week. You know, we, uh, not every place, not every program has the opportunity to play in trophy games and uh, rivalry games. And we have two trophy games that we have on our regular season schedule. And, and we have both of those to finish out the season. So a uh, great opportunity for us uh, to play for the Brass Platoon and uh, a trophy that uh, uh, we've had twice since I've been here. And uh, they currently have it right now. And so uh, much, much to play for with our guys. Set that tone today in our team meeting with them uh, regarding that and it'll be the whole tone for the week and the focus and they'll be able to get our guys ready to play our best football on Saturday in East Lansing. Questions? I guess Tom, sorry I'm back here. Um, a, a quarterback in particular, I mean it, it, based on what you saw Saturday, does that prompt you to make a change at starter? Does that prompt you to build some sort of plan to play both Connor and Dexter? What do you want these last two weeks to look like for you behind center? Well, to me, the, the goal is, you know, we got to be able to um, do what we have to do to be able to put ourselves in the best position to win the football game. So that's the goal is to win. And, uh, um, you know, we're going to play who we feel gives us the best opportunity to do that. So uh, we've obviously um, had a chance to evaluate those guys from their game performance, and that will continue this week throughout practice. And so uh, obviously we saw things that we know uh, what we have there, and so we're going to be able to um, adapt and adjust to help us be successful on Saturday. So we'll uh, not be naming a starter at this time, but we'll be keep evaluating this week. Hey, Coach. A few years ago when you decided not to do, you gave a play calling on defense, one of the things you mentioned was how difficult it was to balance being a head coach with the time constraints of doing that. This time around, how, how do you feel like you've handled that, and is it something where you think you can keep doing it going forward, or do you think at some point you'll have to pass it off again like you did a few years ago? Yeah, I think long-term-wise, I, I think it's a, a good thing to be able to, to pass to someone else, um, and I'll do that when I feel like the time is right uh, for, for that situation. Um, I, I think as um, – you know, it's always challenging time-wise. You know, it was challenging before. It's just still challenging. I, I do feel better about the structure we have now, and I think it's helped. Um, and with having Chad and his role and the, the way that he's able to take over a lot of things for me. So that's been good. Uh, but I just think, you know, just even the whole, you know, the portal, NIL, all the things that we're doing. I mean, I, I'm spending a lot of time working on all those things, you know, as far as the, the NIL piece, and that never stops, you know. And so just continuing to build that because it's such a massive part of the direction of uh, the future of college athletics at this level. So, uh, yeah, it, it's gotten more, you know. The last time I called it, that wasn't even a variable, you know. And so there was no transfer portal and, and the movement that that creates. And so uh, I, I think the job has gotten more complex without question. And so, you know, moving forward, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that eventually, uh, but uh, um, I do like the structure we have, and, and we'll continue to, to always tweak things and try and find ways to get us better and help us play our best on game day. Coach, with the different changes throughout the year, and I know things change and, and, and other things cause things to be different, but with at the quarterback position, how we've seen different guys play well, 
Uh, has there been any questioning of, of maybe the, the talent is not being um, identified as early as possible, uh, like maybe Dexter Williams getting to play earlier and what that could have brought to this team, but the, to identify the talent that is there before it's actually there? Well, I, I think that's always, uh, you know, when you talk about um, your team and uh, who you decide to play and not play, and every position is, is, is different. Um, you know, obviously the quarterback position, you play one guy, so it gets emphasized with what that guy does at a higher level. I get that. Uh, you can play multiple, you know, running backs or linebackers and DBs, and it, it all kind of flows. But, but um, um, you know, I would say this, and that's, it's always the case, and, and uh, I feel like that, uh, um, you know, for each guy, you know, it's, it's their responsibility to prove during practice that they're the guy at that position, you know. And so to me, uh, some guys play better than they practice, you know. You want to obviously see that grow and develop. You don't want them to be a guy that isn't locked in and focused during those practice reps. But but some guys just play better, you know. And so, but uh, bottom line is, is that, you know, you go through and then we'll have to see how everything plays itself out these last couple of weeks. But, but yeah, you, you obviously want to, you want to nail that. You want to be on point with that. You want to be able to project what a guy is going to be able to do. And sometimes you're right about a guy. Sometimes, you know. Um, he goes out there and doesn't perform the way you want him to, and then you and you, you look like you made a mistake making that decision. So, I think the bottom line is is that uh, that never stops. That's going to continue, and you know, we have, that's why we grade and, and, and watch every practice rep, and I watch everything as well on both sides of the ball. It takes a lot of time for sure, but that's what we do. And and so to be able to say, because I even go through and when I'm watching even our younger guys, I'm like, hey, I want to see us. Hey, this is a guy. It's me. Keep showing up when we're we're doing certain things, whether it's watching the offensive against our defensive scouts or when I'm watching our own defense against our offensive scouts. But hey, let's get this guy an opportunity. So kind of happened with Carter Smith, you know, just being able to identify him and see what he can do. And so you know, um, I think that you you just continue that. And uh, you want to make sure you're just getting your best players on the field. And I think we've, we, we've, we're trying to do that. And however that plays itself out moving forward is, is, is us doing our best to be able to get the best guys in position to help us be successful. Uh, I don't think DJ Matthews was at Ohio State. I guess what's what's up with him? Uh, where are Bradley and Josh Sales at? And is there any update on Cam Jones? Yeah, so uh, you just mentioned several guys there. So um, DJ Matthews uh, did not make the trip, unfortunately. Um, did uh, tweak his knee late in the week uh, unexpectedly. So we're just monitoring that. We'll see where that's at. Uh, it was the knee that he did have surgery on. So uh, not serious, but at the same time, it's 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 hard, you know. So we'll see where he's at. Uh, Josh Shells, who we hope to get back. Um, uh, Bradley Jennings, uh, not sure yet. That will be progressing throughout the week, uh, but he had a lower leg injury as well. And then Cam Jones is continuing to battle uh, to, to come back, you know, and so it, we're definitely, that's a daily evaluation of him. We're going to see, do some tests today and see how that, that plays itself out with him moving around. So, uh, but uh, definitely want to, uh, would love to have him back, but also want to make sure it's in his best interest as well. Tom, um, Dexter kept saying that he just kind of wished he'd be more consistent with his yeah. throws, I guess. When you went and watched his film, did you feel like he was maybe misreading certain defenses or was it more of a case where he saw what was there just not making accurate throws? Yeah, I felt like it was, um, you know, rushing things a little bit, you know, not getting his feet set uh, on a couple throws um, and just, you know, I get it, you're out there and it's a you know big stage and, and uh, he is young. And so I think that, uh, you know, some of those misses were just, just – because you read progression, sometimes it's catch and throw, sometimes it's reading the, you know, the coverage and the different things that we read, read for each concept. And so um, I just think it's just being able to um, process everything and then get your feet right and then make throws because obviously he has arm talent. But uh, that is the thing I think you know, we've talked about with him is just being more consistent in that area. And so uh, I think as you just continue to grow and develop, those things develop right with you. Coach, talking to Jalen earlier, he <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Talking to Jalen earlier, he mentioned that he was uh, kind of looking later on into this season to kind of develop a role in the slot receiver position. Have you guys really utilized him in that position, or is there a plan to do that moving forward? Yeah, so that's uh, something that we would like to be able to grow him into without question. Obviously, a lot of variables with that, but uh, I think there's no question that you, when you say, okay, there's find creative ways to get him the football. 
Um, that's the next step, I think, for that, you know, outside of, the, of him being a running back and being a return guy, which is what he's currently doing. So, yeah, I'm all um, in favor of that, for that. And obviously it's not just as simple as just, hey, go over there and play receiver. But uh, there's no question that I think in his, with his skill set and uh, the way he has um, um, ball skills to match, that uh, that's something that moving forward you'd love to be able to get him involved with, yes. Tom, over here um, with Donovan McCulley, just talk about his progression, the way he's progressed, and where you've seen him from the beginning of the year till now. Yeah, so definite growth. I uh, want to see more of it. Uh, expected more of it. I uh, just want him to continue to, to, to maximize everything he's, every opportunity he gets, uh, go up the ball with confidence, go get that football. And he's a big guy that's got you know, length and athleticism and just playing with that confidence. I think that's something he needs to, to develop with and it's growing. There's no question about it. And I want to see him, you know, in my, my, my always, when I challenge him, like, hey, no one, you know, when that ball is thrown up there, it's, it's yours, you know, with what you have physically, I want to see you be, be of that mind. And so uh, to me, there's definite growth, you know, but it's got to continue. And I want to see him finish out this season really, really strong because he's the guy that we uh, have big, big uh, expectations for. And I know he does for himself as well. Coach, when, Coach, when uh, Dexter tore his ACL, it was during practice, so so we obviously weren't there for that. What all just do you remember about that, and then just kind of seeing him go through the process of trying to get back healthy and uh, get back? Yeah, I, I actually vividly remember it because it was one of those where I was like, he did what? I mean, it just I never ever thought by the because he planted, he was cutting. I remember he was running to his right, he planted and he cut to his left, and that's when he popped it, you know, and at the time we didn't know, he knew, you know, he, he limped, you know, off, but, but uh, never thought that that would have caused that type of injury. It was a non-contact one, you know, he was obviously wearing blue jersey, wasn't getting hit, but, but uh, so, yeah, it was just one of those kind of like, wow, I can't believe that just happened once we found out that it was a torn ACL. So uh, pretty uh, tough, you know, you know, it was his first time he's had something like that happen and, and had to go through the whole year long process of coming back, you know, so, but uh, uh, yeah, Definitely one of those. But sometimes you see a guy, you know, you're like, oh, you, you, when you see it happen, you just kind of get sick to your stomach. You think that it might be that. Um, and then some you just can't even believe. And that was one of those that was not what we expected. But, but uh, obviously that's in his past, and he's learned uh, to grow from that and, uh, and just continuing to just keep getting better. Tom, the, uh, the special teams this year have, for the most part, probably been one of the real bright spots in this football team. Um, and a guy that gets no publicity, Sean Ratcher, hmm. the guy that uh, snaps the ball all the time for both field goals, extra points, and, and punting. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you feel about that guy. Yeah, you know, Sean, to me, um, one of our most valuable players, That especially when you start thinking about most valuable players that nobody knows much about, you know. Uh, but his value to this team is, is immense. Um, He's so consistent. He's so dependable. Uh, everybody kind of forgets he's there because he always does his job. Great snaps, great location. You know, we we, we uh, directional punt, so th it's not like he just snaps straight back to the punter every single time. There's different legs you snap it to based on what we're going to where we're going to punt it. So uh, there's a lot more to it than it, it might even appear. And then uh, he's the leader of that group. You know, he's the leader of our special teams unit and uh, takes tremendous pride in it. Um, is just uh, has high expectations. You know, those guys do a lot of things on their own uh, during practice, um, and and he's he leads that group. And so, just invaluable to have his consistency. We went out and recruited him. He came to our camp. He worked out for us at the camp, and we offered him based off that workout. And we knew he was. You know, that's one of those skill sets where you gotta. You know, you got numbers that you get you know we know how fast his long snaps are and his short snaps are and you can see his location you, you chart all those things and so and then you try and find a guy that fits your um your culture and what you want here on your football team and he fit all those things and then you know, he was a baseball player i like multi-sport guys i just think guys that learn to compete at other in other sports it matters you know and so i, I like that about him and so that's just uh, he kind of was the complete package of what we're looking for and he's been phenomenal for us and uh he's gonna leave here with two degrees and he's a very sharp young man excellent student and uh, high high character so couldn't be more uh proud of him and uh like i said he's a guy that most people don't know much about but very very valuable and uh what he does helps our team in a huge way win games Tom, this is, I guess, kind of philosophical, but when you have quarterbacks with different skill sets and, and thinking about Dexter's ability to obviously break the pocket and run, thinking about 
his arm strength, but also, as I imagine you might recognize with your staff at the beginning of the season, he may not be one or two. He may be a little bit further down the depth chart to start a season. Do, how much do you want to build for somebody like that in the event they do have to play in terms of specific packages within an offense? I imagine you don't want to spend too much time on it, but if that player, for whatever reason, does wind up playing significant snaps, basically having a part of the playbook that, that really – goes to their specific skills, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's a, a valid point. And, and I think especially, like you, you mentioned, that you got guys that have different skill sets, and, and that, that is a, a, the, the case here. And so, but I, but I will say, you know, he, he was, like you said, he wasn't the, the two. And so, um, you know, he was always with, the, um, with that group taking some reps, you know, and doing all the routes on air and doing all the things with that group. So we did, for that very reason, we kept him with those guys. And so um, knew that he had talent for sure, was young. Um, the year that he missed, set him back without question. Um, and obviously it is a new system that, that they've all had to learn. So um, I just think yeah, the, the challenge is always how much, how many reps do you put into that guy, you know, that may or may not play much. And uh, to be able to get that, and, and also to be able to, if it's different, you know, so it's kind of, it is definitely package driven, would I would say. And it would be a, a very, it's been a very precise package part of that to, to start with, and then you grow from there. So uh, I think that's how you manage it, you know. And I do think there is, there is a lot of benefit of having, you know, multi, because when I, when I sit there and think about defensively, and we, we come up with the game plan, if I don't have to change the game plan based on the quarterback skill set, you know, one A or one B, it might not matter who the quarterback is. But if you've got a completely different kind of quarterback, that can change everything that you do schematically. So there are some benefits to that without question. Uh, does create some challenges, so you got to weigh those two against each other. And at the end of the day, for us here, it's just, we're always just trying to find the best quarterbacks we can find that uh, we believe can help us win. And those guys are all a little bit different. And uh, then once you decide who those guys are, you make sure your scheme is adapted to help them be at their best. Hey, Coach. Dexter mentioned that two of his closest friends on the team are Donovan and Jalen. How much is that off the field chemistry and cohesiveness? How much would that possibly play a role in certain packages being put on the field and maybe increased snap counts for some guys? Well, I think that any any time you know you have connectivity with guys, it's positive. You know, I think that uh, you know as you um, that's why I think it's it's ideal. You know, as you move forward and you have you know a guy that's you know the quarterback that's the leader of your team, the leader of that side of the football, leader of that room, leader of that, and the guys gravitate to him, you know, that's kind of what you want. And then they, uh, um, you know, that's where in today's balance of, you know, quarterbacks staying places and, and moving around, like it every, happens every place, you know, to be able to create that, you know, continuity and connectivity is over time is, is challenging without, without question. So, but I, I think that's where, because, you know, I think it's like anything else when a, a guy feels more comfortable with certain guys who's going to look to, you know, when he either breaks the pocket or he's back in the pocket, and whether it's part of his reprogression or not. So even we know that we always say, hey, who's the, who's the quarterback look to when he needs a play? You know, that way, that's the guy we usually try to, try takeaway, you know, and so um, I think there's no question that can be uh, a part of those guys feeling comfortable with each other, playing well together, and, and looking for each other when they're, when they're out there, and so you'd like to be able to build that within your team and, and hope that that'll help you, you know, score points and win football games. Coach, you mentioned the portal earlier. Um, I know guys have been going in since the season started, but I know in a couple weeks it's going to really start get going when the season ends for a lot of teams. Have you guys identified any certain positions where, as you look to the portal and you get into December and recruiting really kicks up, where you might want to go try to get some older guys or a veteran guy to kind of plug a hole to bridge the gap to the, to the younger guy? We definitely um, have gone through that already and have a list of guys, or not guys, but spots, you know, positions that we're trying to address. And so, um, yeah, and I think it's definitely, you know, amazing how quickly it's changed, you know, to where that number grows, you know, because of guys that, you know, in the twos and three spots that, that choose not to stay sometimes. So uh, I just think that, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be something that's going to be a huge focus. We've already identified those spots. And, and to me, it's, uh, you know, you're going to have a base level of, of guys coming in and out of high school. That won't change. But uh, the, the, one, the group in the middle there that you have to continue to, to address and keep your rooms in proper order in terms of the, the age of that group, that to me is critical. So, yeah, we've identified it, had two specific staff meetings regarding that already, and, and we'll have another one here tomorrow. So, yeah, it's definitely a huge focus for us, and it's ongoing building this program. 
Coach, I think you had said last week that Dexter is basically a guy that's just really, really well respected within the locker room. Um, I guess, what does he do specifically to, to earn that? Maybe, I guess, from his teammates or specifically you? Well, I mean, I think, you know, like everybody, and, and I challenge all of our quarterbacks to be this way, and that is, you know, you earn it by your work ethic, you know, uh, being a guy that is a hard, hard worker in that weight room, everything we do off the field, uh, in a conditioning perspective, be a leader in those moments, uh, be in great shape, you know, be a guy that uh, um, leads, you know, we, we talk about that phrase, leading by example, it's base level. It's if it doesn't if that doesn't happen, um, the next, it's not possible to go to the next level of leadership. Uh, but it can't stop there, and so and I think because he's he's verbal, you know, he will encourage, challenge. Uh, he has a really really um, you know he's a great personality. Um, he's an articulate guy that that's not afraid to speak, and uh, really um, loves his teammates, and then they they love him back. And so I, I think just in general, you know, we got several guys on this team I would say this about, but just. Um, a genuine, really, really good person that's worked really, really hard. I think they respect you know, the adversity he's overcome to come back um, and to stay here, you know, and being a young quarterback that has obviously showed that he has talent, but those guys have to kind of, you know, wait their turn, you know, and in this day and age, it's, it's not easy to do that. A lot of guys aren't willing to wait their turn. And so the fact that he stayed here and he's been, been true to us. And so I think the guys respect that about him, you know, and they enjoy being around him. And so, but I just think there's, there's certain things you have, you know, innately that uh, you attract people to you, you know. And so he's just one of those guys. And, and uh, you know, I think everybody's just pulling for Dexter. In fact, kind of that's probably the best way to say when he's coming back and, and uh, just wanting to be able to maximize what he's been given. So just a high quality person. He's, he's experienced some, some real you know, challenges off the field as well and, and uh, at home. And, and that, I think, once again, that causes guys to really just rally around you a little bit. So um, he's just a genuinely good person that's worked really, really hard and, and uh, has, has some really, you know, some really good level football talent. Awesome. Have a great day, Elio.